All right, so we are officially now live and recording. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and share my screen, um, which will interrupt you quickly, but you'll be able to get right back up. And I pulled this up to um, go over just a quick housekeeping, as well as give students time to just trickle in. So of course, um, first off, a big welcome to our virtual college exploration for all Pennsylvania students sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Uh, your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of the many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check out our full schedule at pacac.org. This, present, this, <laughs> excuse me, this presentation is being recorded and it will be available within about a week at that same website, pacac.org. And with that, I'd love to turn this over to our presenters and let them take it away. Thank you so much. Hopefully we're uh, seeing a map that's up here. Uh, welcome to Pitt's regional campuses, the best of both worlds. Um, I am Bob Dilks from the Bradford campus, and I'll be moderating our group uh, and also presenting uh, some information about our campus at the, at the Bradford campus. I have with me Dana, B uh, Dana Bearer from the Greensburg campus, Brett Hasselrig from the Johnstown campus, and also uh, Bob Beener from the Johnstown campus. But before we start talking about the regional campuses, we have to give a big shout out to the flagship campus in Pittsburgh. The University of Pittsburgh gives us the backbone and the strength to do what it is that we do at, at the regional campuses. Uh, the Pitt degree is recognized worldwide. Our 233 year old world-class university is in the city of Pittsburgh and is home to nearly 20,000 undergraduate students. If a city environment is not your style and you're looking for a smaller school, uh, but still want that prestigious Pitt degree, we think we might have just what you're looking for. All three of the Pitt regional campuses offer you smaller class sizes, the ability to earn your degree entirely on our campuses in over 50 different majors. Actually, we offer lower tuition rate than the Pittsburgh campus and the ability to make the most of your college education and stand out if you want to. All of our graduates earn the Pitt degree, just like those attending the Pittsburgh campus. If you take a peek here at our map, uh, you'll see all of our campuses represented. Uh, on the bottom of the map, on the right-hand side, is Pitt Johnstown. Uh, if you move to the west, you'll see the Greensburg campus, which is in many eyes, uh, a suburb of Pittsburgh. And of course, May I'm sorry, the last thing I wanna do is interrupt, but your screen is not sharing. Oh no, it shows that it is. One moment, let's see what we're doing here. My apologies. not sharing the proper screen. Thumbs up, excellent. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything. Uh, the Pitt Regional Campuses, and here is our map, and it shows where everybody's located in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, obviously, the city of Pittsburgh is the closest to the Greensburg and the Johnstown campuses. And my campus, Pitt Bradford, is located all the way in the northern tier of Pennsylvania, uh, known as Northwestern Pennsylvania. We're actually about 20 minutes away from the state of New York. So let's talk about Pitt Bradford for a minute. Our campus in Bradford offers over 40 different majors. 
Uh, the most popular majors are business, psychology, criminal justice, forensic science, and of course, many of the pre-professional programs that focus uh, on biology as the primary area of study, things like pre-medicine, uh, physical therapy, pre-physician's assistant, among others. Um, students uh, come first on our campus, and because of our size, our faculty and staff are committed to student success and work very diligently to make sure that you're connected with the services, the support, and all of the things that will make your educational experience a very positive one. And our goal is graduation, just like it is for you. Um, the easiest way for me to really tell you about the campus is to show it to you. And I've got a very short video that I'm going to play for you right now. Welcome to the University of Pittsburgh at Bradford. Pitt Bradford is a regional campus of the University of Pittsburgh, where you will be part of a welcoming and inclusive community of nearly 1,500 students. Pitt Bradford is near the Allegheny National Forest and Allegheny State Park in neighboring New York State, which will give you many recreational options to keep you energized and educational opportunities to keep you challenged. The University of Pittsburgh is known for its pursuit of innovation, and there are many places at Pitt Bradford where you can be your most creative self. For example, Torque Hall houses a dedicated lab for our computer information systems and technology major, where our students learn about VR systems and design, as well as hardware system architecture, covering everything from server assembly to enterprise workstations. If the arts are more your thing, you will find our programs in art, theater, music, and broadcast communications in Blaisdell Hall. The building also houses our all-digital television and radio studio, as well as a 500-seat theater where you can take in some amazing live entertainment. It's our one-stop shop for creatives set on careers in the world of multimedia content creation. For the more technically minded, Fisher Hall houses our science and math classes and is home to our engineering program and energy institute. Our science labs are stocked with state-of-the-art scientific equipment designed to aid in a variety of research and experiments. Fisher Hall also features two computer-aided learning centers called Calc Labs, as well as a rooftop greenhouse and engineering lab. In our very own state-of-the-art CSI house, our students solve a variety of mock crimes, including murders, burglaries, and assaults, using leading industry tactics and forensics equipment, learning how to secure a crime scene, locate and lift fingerprints, identify fiber samples, and make tire and footprint paths prepare students for a career in forensic investigation. Need some research or academic assistance? Look no further than the Hanley Library. Besides borrowing some of the many materials available in the library, you can also find a perfect place to study or work on a project with classmates. If all of that studying leaves you in need of a quick recharge, you can pick up some freshly brewed Starbucks coffee or baked goods at the cafe. Speaking of grabbing something to eat, the Frame Westerberg Commons is a campus favorite where you can eat, relax, and hang out with friends in either our spacious dining hall or game room. The Commons is home of the Panther Shop, where you'll find everything you need for classes and official Pitt at Bradford gear. When you're ready to rest and unwind, we have you covered in any one of our relaxing residence halls. Nearly all of our halls offer apartment or suite style living, and each is spacious, furnished, and comfortable. Our newest residence hall, Livingston Alexander House, was designed to help first-year students adjust to college life and develop their own community. Its community lounges and fitness areas give students many opportunities to socialize and build new relationships. And if fitness is on your list of must-haves, you'll want to check out our Sport and Fitness Center, which is home to our 14 NCAA Division III sports team. During their seasons, you can find our men's and women's basketball, women's volleyball, men's wrestling, and men's and women's swim teams competing for collegiate greatness. Feel free to work out in the fitness center, play a pickup game of basketball in the field house, or swim laps in the pool. There's no shortage of reasons to visit Pitt Bradford, and no time like the present to apply. Visit our website today to begin the exciting journey with the University of Pittsburgh at Bradford that will take you beyond your expectations. Well, I hope that gave you a good glimpse of what Pitt Bradford's all about. It's the best I can do in terms of a visit from where you sit right now at home. Um, we'll talk about the specifics of how you can apply to any of the Pitt campuses 
uh, and those types of things. And please uh, type in any questions that you might have, and we will try and address those before the end of the day. We have about 10 or 15 minutes at the end of our presentations to uh, field questions. Uh, but at this time, I, I'd like to turn things over to Dana uh, so you can hear about the Greensburg campus. Thanks so much, Bob, and welcome to everyone. Um, while we would all love to visit with you in person on each of our campuses, uh, we find that this is the, the next best way to introduce you to our campuses and to our Pitt Regional System. Many of you um, have heard about the wonderful uh, opportunities at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, what some of you may not have known is that our regional campuses um, are part and parcel of the larger system. And so we want to introduce you to each of the special things about each of our schools. And I love that video. Uh, I'll tell you, Bob, I've never actually gone through that. And um, your campus is beautiful, as all of ours are. Uh, but they're, they're also very different in many ways. Um, the Pitt Greensburg campus, in, in relation to the, to the main campus over in Pittsburgh, in the Oakland area of Pittsburgh, uh, is only 30 minutes away. So on our campus, we often do see students relocate to Pittsburgh after their second year. Um, we tend not to restrict students to do that. So while most of our campuses want students to stay for four years, and we certainly encourage that, stay four years at our Pittsburgh Greensburg campus, uh, we know for a fact that students do want to relocate at some point, at least in our Westmoreland, Allegheny County region. Um, so it gives students an opportunity to uh, begin their Pittsburgh degree in a smaller, more intimate, uh, more rural, suburban type of environment. So it's not for everybody, um, but it is for about 1,500 students a year who enjoy that kind of environment. We have Division Three athletics. So if you wanna to continue to play sports, you can do that on our campus. We have about 45 majors. And so all of our programs are, are accredited regionally. So any program that you would start at our campus in Greensburg, you can continue on to the Pittsburgh campus um, two, to, two years down the road or whenever you feel like you might want to do that. And some students, about half of our students stay for the whole four years, the other half move on to Pittsburgh uh, to complete their Pitt degree. Um, I too have a short little um, video. I, I probably won't play the whole thing, but it's on the YouTube site on our website if you choose to go back and, and look at the entire video. But I did want to give you just a real brief view of our campus. Uh, we are suburban. Um, we are a self-enclosed campus, so you don't have city streets driving through our campus. Um, and the closest town is actually the city of Greensburg which is probably about a 15 minute walk. So we are pretty self, self enclosed. And I just, um, to be transparent, I like to show students that because if you do come to Pitt Greensburg, um, there's not a lot of opportunity to walk into town, for example, but we do have shuttles that are available every 15 or 20 minutes. There's a shuttle bus that goes through and we do have the Westmoreland County Mall, which is right up the street from our campus. So at this stage in the game, while you're exploring, um, some of the things that'll be interesting to you are, you know, where are you? What does your campus look like? Do students live on your campus? We, we, re uh, we have about 500 students who reside on our campus full time, um, just to answer that question. So we do have a large commuting population, but we're perfect for students who live in a three county area um, contiguous to, to Westmoreland because you can actually commute to our campus very comfortably. Um, if that's what you desire. So let me give you uh, a quick look at the, um, the campus via our, our YouTube uh, visit and um, we'll see. Uh, this is our virtual campus. Can you all see that? Thumbs up? Yep, okay. Just give you a, a brief little overview of the campus. That's Melissa. She loves to talk, but I, I'm going to actually. Welcome to the University of Pittsburgh. Although I wasn't able to talk, we'll start our time I'm 
just going to kind of take you around without making you dizzy um, to just let you know that our campus is is beautiful this time of year. I just wish we could all be there. Um, we have an, a lower campus and an upper campus. So this is really where the students participate in student activities. Our library is here. Our nursing school is here. Um, Chambers Hall that you just saw right behind Melissa is where all the students gather in the student center. This part of campus is, is there's a bridge that connects the academic side of campus. So it's very walkable, very doable. But I just wanted to just put this out here to show you the vast amount of green space that we have the opportunity for commuters to have ample parking, um, the opportunity for students just to be very comfortable and safe on our campus and show you that it is really just a, an all-inclusive type of campus. So that's what I'll show you for now, but certainly invite you to go over to our website um, and take a full virtual tour because during that tour we also highlight our residence halls. Uh, we have some beautiful suite style housing. We also have some traditional housing um, one thing that I'm sure we'll, we'll finish up with towards the end is the cost of our PIT education at the regional campuses. We're about 25% less overall than if you were to go to um, the Pittsburgh campus directly. So we operate in a little different fashion. Um, we, we have less um, expenses in some cases. So um, to come to one of our regional campuses will cost you a little bit less and you can get the same PIT degree for less money. Uh, we all participate in the Pell Match program, so if you're eligible for a Pell Grant, uh, we all match that dollar for dollar, so that's very common among our campuses. But I think what uh, I'd like to leave you with at this moment and hope that we can reconnect at some point, um, invite you over for a tour or at least a, a drive-through tour of our campus, is that we are close to Pittsburgh. You can be a Pitt student while still learning in a more intimate environment it's very safe, very easy to, um, to maneuver around our campus. We have a faculty ratio, 18 to 1 student-teacher ratio. So we have a lot of personal attention that we can bring uh, to your education. And that's one of the best things that we pride ourselves on is being able to connect with you, the student, and um, make, make those at least the first two years and hopefully all four years um, the best possible experience that you could have. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass the baton over to Mr. Brett Hasselray, my colleague over at the Johnstown campus. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you Dana. Uh, thank you, Bob, too, for uh, getting this set up and serving as our moderator. Um, as Dana mentioned, my name is Brett Hasselray with the Pitt Johnstown campus. Uh, with me today is Robert Beener. Uh, he's our Director of Enrollment Operations and Analytics. Uh, both of us are recent additions to the Pitt Johnstown. That's why we're so excited. You're getting two of us here today. We haven't had the opportunity of uh, having an actual open house where we've had a chance to engage with prospective students. So we're just happy to be able to do this in, in some means in some manner. Um, uh, <clears throat> but I thought I do have a few slides that I'll share with you um, uh, as we uh, pr proceed. Um, but again, you know, as Bob and uh, as Dana brought out, um, you know, what we're excited about, you know, here at, at Pitt Johnstown, or at least with the Pitt system, um, is that there's a fit for everyone. Um, you know, at the, at the core, you're going to be receiving uh, traditional benefits associated with the University of Pittsburgh. Um, but at, at the, uh, but at the root, though, you have a choice. You know, you have options. You know, whether it's Bradford, Greensburg, or Johnstown. And uh, what Bob and I, um, you know, thought we would kind of touch on were um, just some of the unique things that that we feel make us, you know, different and unique at the Johnstown campus. And you know, to get things started off, um, you know, really what we feel the the distinctive combination of our our people programs in place, you know, really leads to except, exceptional performance, you know, for our students when we're helping them prepare for their personal uh, and professional career success, you know, at the Johnstown campus. Um, and, and leading off, uh, going into our people, you know, again, similar to our, our comrades at, you know, Bradford and Greensburg, you know, we're a small institution. Um, you know, with that, we have about 3,000 total students. You know, that leads to uh, individualized uh, uh, personal attention, you know, small class sizes, you know, class size is going to be, uh, you know, around like 20 people per class. You know, that really leads to one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one interaction, you know, with faculty. 
uh, when you speak to most of our faculty, you know, why they chose to work at an institution like, uh, uh, such as Pitt Johnson is because they want that type of relationship. They want that type of engagement, you know, with students. Um, but even in addition to that, you know, allows for one-to-one -one academic advising and then also, you know, support on the academic support side of things. You know, our academic success center, they do a great job um, in providing peer-to-peer uh, -peer tutoring for students who may need a little bit more uh, additional assistance or even monitoring, you know, courses that, um, you know, may, may provide some struggles for some students and working with faculty um, to establish what those courses are, um, finding upper class students, you know, who are very versed in those courses and having those students serve as a group mentors, you know, where they provide weekly study uh, help desk hours, you know, for students who may just have one question or may need a little bit more attention. Um, but again, just, you know, and getting back to the people, that's who we are. You know, those are the type of individuals that you will uh, interact with, you know, at Pitt Johnstown campus. Um, continuing on with the people, you know, the institution, you know, at, uh, the people at the institution, they've done a good job of fostering and creating productive partnerships, you know, within our region. Um, you know, this is with local businesses, local institutions, and, and really what that does, it provides our students with real world learning opportunities, you know, whether it's at the internship level, um, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, research opportunities, or just being able to network with future employers, you know, in, in within the region. And overall, we have about 20,000 alumni uh, within the Commonwealth and, and contiguous regions um, that are always looking to, to help out with our students and, and to give them opportunities as well. So those are the people, you know, in regards to what you can find in regards to the people, you know, at Pitt Johnstown. Now, in regards to our programs, um, <clears throat> we have, uh, we offer 70 different majors within our seven academic divisions. Uh, you know, we offer programs that are traditionally rooted in our liberal arts and sciences. Um, but then also, too, you know, what the institution has done over the years is uh, assessing, you know, what are the jobs that are in demand. And, and recently, you know, we've, we've gone through and, and added you know, in-demand programs um, such as nursing, justice administration, and criminology, um, the addition of our ABET accredited engineering programs, uh, business management, and cybersecurity. But really trying to help our region in, in assessing, you know, what are the jobs in need and what are ways that we can help and develop a you know, talent for those particular uh, careers. Um, within all of our academic programs, you know, again, as I maybe mentioned before, but students are going to be able to, to, to receive, you know, practical real world focused learning experiences, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, mentoring, uh, individual mentoring, you know, with local uh, 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 local uh, businessmen um, or being immersed in with, with faculty on undergraduate research. You're going to have those opportunities for hands on experience, you know, at Pitt Johnstown. Um, one of the, the new features, you know, new programs through our, our uh, business and enterprise program, uh, students enrolled in our entrepreneurship course, you know, through the semester participate in our, our pitch fest. You know, so it's a summer a semester long course where students, you know, develop research a product um, and then at the it all culminates with them pitching that product to uh, local businessmen, you know, an idea, and basically in this case, they're looking for, for funding for this. And students actually will, though the grand prize winner will receive, you know, a thousand dollar or more to continue on with their development. Um, but again, these are the types of programs we want to provide our students, you know, that, that hands-on experience, you know, at the Pitt Johnstown campus. And looking outside the classroom um, as well, you know, students are actively involved uh, with, with campus life, but then also we want to make sure that they have a civic mindedness and awareness to them as well. You know, on average, about our students uh, usually participate in about 17,000 hours of community service. And whether that's through uh, Greek life, um, you know, different service clubs or organizations, um, there's a lot of ways that they go out and get involved within our community, which is great because we want to foster that idea that um, there are potentially going to be uh, future community members, maybe not just in our region, but outside. And we want them to, to take an awareness to that area and give back. Um, and then we're also a NCAA Division II athletics program with uh, 15 sports and um, our students have the opportunity to compete, you know, at a high level, participate in the uh, Pennsylvania State Athletic Association Conference. Um, but more importantly, our division, our student athletes are students first, you know, um, over the last couple of years on average, our student athletes have had a 3.15 uh, GPA. So they do the work and, and along with that, you know, it's a thing that you, you don't have to feel 
you have to choose, you know, you can have the best of both, you know, the academics and athletics, you know, at Pitt Johnstown um, on our campus. Let me get into the place. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have a lot of land, a lot of undeveloped land, you know, on our on our campus. But you have over 600 acres to play with, you know, at, at your fingertips. And you know, why we feel this helps, you know, again with our student success. Um, on the academic side of thing, as I mentioned, we have a lot of areas that are undeveloped that provides opportunities for you know our natural science students, you know, to, to get out and then have those field experiences working on research. Um, but also just due to location allows our students who have an interest in outdoor activities to participate in, you know, hiking, bike biking, mountain biking, uh, 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 skiing and, and such uh, outdoor activities as well. Um, in addition to our, our campus location, we've done a good job over these last couple of years in, in reinvesting in, in, in building state-of-the-art facilities. You know, our newest facility is our uh, chemical engineering building, um, which is attached to our, new, our renovated engineering and science building as well. Um, <clears throat> these facilities provide state-of-art uh, academic support to our students within those divisions and um, also providing just uh, sort of a home away from home where students can have dedicated space for their studies, but then also if they're working on projects and just having access you know, to faculty as well. Um, in addition to those two buildings, we also have our nursing uh, and health science building that's home for our nursing students that provides simulation lab experience also. And then the big part, you know, when you're going to college, it's just living at college. And you know what the experience you can expect to find is a very student-centered community where um, we want students to, to, to be active and engage with various different clubs and organizations um, that help just immerse them within our mountain cat community and, and feel the belongingness. And, you know, when living on campus, students have very different options of, of different housing to choose from, um, whether it be um, apartment style housing, townhouses, lodges, um, to your traditional dormitories. Um, but definitely we feel it helps students, you know, provide, you know, and create strong social connections within our institution and, and amongst our, our mountain cat community. Um, <clears throat> Now I'm gonna stop my share for now and um, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Robert Beaner to see if there's anything that he would like to add on to that. Um, it's a little awkward, wasn't able to, to see his eyes since I had my, my PowerPoint up, but um, anything else you'd like to share in regards to Pitt Johnstown, Bob? Uh, no, I think uh, you hit the nail on the head, Brett. Um, a, a beautiful campus, a, a huge beautiful campus, a lot of great programs. Um, as someone who rel is relatively new to the Pitt system, I'm incredibly proud to be part of the University of Pittsburgh that traces its heritage back to 1770. Uh, so among the colonial era, co era colleges that's developed into the University of Pittsburgh and has uh, created three um, you know, dynamic, uh, unique, but, um, but uniquely Pittsburgh uh, regional campuses. And as someone who's been on all three, um, I can tell you they're all absolutely stunning. And if you haven't had the chance to visit, when things open up a little bit, I really encourage that you do so. Uh, but until then, you continue to take advantage of those uh, virtual visits that we're all offering um, and reach out and engage with our staff. Um, we're all here to help. We're all Pittsburgh. Um, and and um, again, I got, personally, I couldn't be more thrilled to be part of this, uh, part of this team. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to throw up this screen right here. Hopefully, we've got a Q&A screen up. Um, we have some contact information at the bottom. But one of the things, as, as everybody was presenting their information, uh, not seeing necessarily a, a deluge of questions, uh, wanted to throw some, some questions out there for us to answer collectively um, in terms of uh, how things work and also provide a little broad-based information about all of the regional campuses. Um, one, uh, from an application standpoint, you can apply to the University of Pittsburgh uh, very easily. Uh, any one of our campuses, including the Pittsburgh campus, has an application link very prominent on uh, the front page of, of just about anywhere you go uh, on our websites. And we share a common application uh, in the sense of it's, uh, it's a, it looks the same uh, when you begin the process and you set up an account and then you select the campus in which you're interested in applying to. And at this time, you can only apply to one campus within the University of Pittsburgh at a time. And you can follow through and provide the information. Uh, you're able to self-report information. Uh, you're also able to send in your high school information. And at this time, the University of Pittsburgh 
all of the campuses uh, are test optional. So you are able to go down that route. Uh, the regional campuses uh, are holistic, very holistic in the review of applicants. And so we're looking, for, looking at all the information that you provide us when applying. Uh, and I think I can speak for all the staff uh, in the different admissions offices. Uh, our goal is to uh, complete your application as soon as possible and get an answer to you as soon as possible. And we're all just getting rolling uh, now. We're very early in that stage. And uh, I, I know that admission decisions are starting to flow uh, to students that have already applied and have been accepted, which is awesome. Um, and we're here to help you if you have questions of any kind uh, along the way. And I would encourage you to reach out to the campus specifically that you have an interest in. Um, Dana mentioned uh, during the financial aid process, you'll hear a lot of lingo, but one of the things that you and your family need to be uh, really aware of is the best way to be considered for all forms of financial aid is to complete what's known as the FAFSA form. If you need assistance with the FAFSA form, you can reach out to our campuses, even ask your guidance counselor. They'll be able to give you a, a few pointers in that regard. You can complete the FAFSA form now for next year. And that is critical for all of our financial aid staffs to uh, make uh, the best, uh, provide you with the best financial aid pa package possible and consider you for all forms of financial aid. Uh, whether that's through the federal government or through the state government, uh, and also the eligibility if you need to borrow money, we can provide you that information, but the FAFSA is critical. Um, Dana also mentioned about uh, the University of Pittsburgh as a whole, if you are eligible for a Pell Grant, which is through the federal government, um, we, the university, uh, provides a matching dollar-for-dollar uh, dollar grant to go with that Pell Grant which can make, uh, make a financial aid package look really, really good sometimes to, to folks that are in need. Um, we feel that the regional campuses are an incredible educational value. When you look at the strong financial aid packages that we offer students, coupled with the lower uh, actual tuition cost uh, in comparison to the Pittsburgh campus at least, uh, we are an incredible uh, educational value, especially when it culminates in earning a University of Pittsburgh degree. One of the things that we share as a university as well, uh, study abroad opportunities. The university is vast uh, and we all share in the opportunities available to study abroad. Over 70 countries are available for students to do so. We all know that COVID-19 has kind of scrambled everybody's eggs a little bit in terms of how how we can do certain things and, and the opportunities that are available, but it's always important to look to the future and be optimistic. And we believe that uh, many of the things that have been traditionally available like study abroad will be uh, available again for students to take advantage of. And they're, they're fantastic. And Pitt does a fantastic job as do all of our campuses in offering that. And uh, lastly, I'll put a plug in there for the fact that the university as a whole because we are a system, we share one gigantic, enormous, unbelievably uh, fantastic uh, library system and resources that you can draw upon from any campus uh, as a student, as a Pitt student. And of course, our alumni base is uh, around the world, whether it's directly from our campuses specifically or from the university at, at large. And uh, there are incredible resources to be a part of Panther Nation out there. Uh, and, and we hope that uh, you apply, you enroll, and uh, ultimately become part of that alumni base. Uh, one of the questions I wanted to throw out there to everybody, uh, number of students on the campuses and how many people are living on campus? So at Greensburg, we're at about 1450 right now and about 450 students are living on campus right now. Um, if COVID wasn't happening, we'd have closer to 500 students living on campus, maybe even five with capacity for over 600. Um, and so our enrollment is hovering around 1450 um, and it's been that way for a while. So that's, that's probably gonna remain pretty steady. Um, uh, yeah, here in Johnstown, uh, about 
a little over 3,000 total students. Um, we have 1,800 students living in university um, run campus housing, but we have a lot of apartments and, and things near campus that our students will elect to, to move into um, some really great facilities. And at the Bradford campus, we have just under 1,400 students enrolled. Uh, historically, 1,000 students live on campus uh, due to COVID and the ability to, to uh, be working you know, at a distance in many cases. Uh, we have a little better than 800 uh, residing on campus currently, but normally uh, would be closer to 1,000. Um, it's fair to say that housing is available, uh, readily available for students, not only the, the freshman class coming in, but also upperclassmen. And I know that sometimes can be a challenge at different institutions. Um, and we all offer multiple different types of housing uh, on our campus. Um, different types of apartments, different types of uh, dormitory living and things of that nature. Um, any other thoughts or comments, uh, gang, before we wrap things up? Uh, I think one of the, um, throw one other thing out there. I know Dana mentioned about the, the relocate, relocation process to Pittsburgh, but I'm gonna just highlight, you know, the relocation process, it's, it's for all of the Pittsburgh system. You know, we have students who, um, you know, may wanna relocate to the Greensburg campus or Bradford campus, you know, from Johnstone. So I guess that is one nice, um, you know, highlight within the system is that, you know, students have that, have that availability, you know, to them. Um, in this case, you know, if they go to one campus and find, um, maybe the program's a little bit different or, or in this case, just um, uh, the fit maybe is a little bit different. You know, again, they can stay within the PIT system and, and find the appropriate setting. But there is a relocation process for all students to move, you know, throughout all the different uh, campuses. Mm -hmm. I, I would just add as well that in the near future, you're going to be seeing a lot of marketing materials coming out from the University of Pittsburgh, and it's going to be called um, the Pitt Fits campaign. So when you see Pitt Fits, you'll understand what we're talking about now. The fact is, there's a campus out there in the Pitt system that will fit your needs and interests. And we hope as you continue to explore, you'll figure out which one of those campuses fits best for you. Um, the other thing that I'll share is just a personal um, um, little story about uh, my experience. I have th uh, three grown children who have just recently gone through the college process and um, each one of them was very, very different. Each one of my children chose a school that blew my mind um, because I was like, well, I think you're more of a small campus person. And then that, that child ended up at a big campus. So it, even, as, even as a mom, I, I look at the students I recruit and I think to myself, wow, Today, you might think you're a small campus kid, but boy, by the time you're done exploring your options and you actually get all the information and you make your visitations and you talk to people, you may find yourself at a very different environment. And that's what's so cool about the University of Pittsburgh is that we have multiple opportunities for you to explore different opportunities and different uh, experiences. Um, and, and it's really, this is, this is a very difficult time during COVID for you to be going through this, but I, I can give you some hope and let you know that the end result is still the same. If you choose Pitt, you're going to end up with a great Pitt degree with a lot of um, alumni support around the world. You're going to have um, connections with, with faculty, staff, um, other students, that, friendships that you'll have for a lifetime at the University of Pittsburgh. And whichever campus you choose to begin your Pitt degree, you'll all end up with a Pitt degree. And that's really the exciting part of it. And so I, I, I bid you farewell with a, a hopeful thought that even though this is a difficult time and nobody's ever gone through the college process like this before, you're the, the first generation of kids that have to do it this way, I think you'll be better for it. I think you'll be more resilient as a student. And um, I look forward to, to coaching you through um, any decisions that you might make uh, regarding Pitt. To echo Dana's thoughts in that regard, this is all new to all of us in terms of the process and how you go about navigating the college selection process in the age of COVID-19 concerns. And one thing that is critical is uh, the University of Pittsburgh it takes it very seriously um, and safety is top of mind in everything that we do. Um, currently, we have limited opportunities for you to visit campus, and we all are trying to create unique ways for you to, to visit us and, and chat with us um, virtually. And I would encourage you to look at our websites. If there's a campus that interests you, 
or check us all out and uh, uh, connect with a counselor. Uh, we're here to talk with you, answer any questions you have, and hopefully show you as much as we can at a distance. And uh, as we are able to open up individually as campuses and provide you the opportunity to drive to campus and, and, and walk around and, and really see things old school, the way it used to be, uh, that will be uh, obvious on our websites and you'll be able to check that out. Um, we're glad that you stopped in to check us out. Um, as, uh, as we say, hail to Pitt, and hopefully we'll see you on our campus, one of them, sometime soon. Well, hey, thank you so much. That was really fantastic. Um, if you're ready for me to jump in and wrap it up. Go for it. <laughs> All right, didn't want to cut you thank off. Thank you, Katie. My pleasure. All right, so. I just have a uh, quick ending slide, very similar to my starting slide. Um, and of course, as I said, huge thank you to our panelists today, as well as our students attending. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very brief four question survey. And we do really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. As I said at the beginning, this is just one of our many sessions being hosted. So please feel free to sign up for any additional sessions at pacac.org. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all of our other session recordings, same website, pacac.org. Thank you all so much, and have a great Thursday. <laughs> it's Thursday.